Can you tell me who you are and what it is that you do? Um, I am Ruby Paul and I shoot for Great Britain on the archery team. So, where did it all begin for Ruby Paul? Well, in the summer of 2012, my brothers both did archery before me. Um, so I just sat there watching them over this whole summer holiday. And then come the October when I finally put my foot down and said, no, I want to have a go. Um, so, yeah, it just kind of went from there. My brothers have stopped shooting now, um, but I've just kept on going with it. I would say I was competitive with my brothers. One of them, Louis, he um, went to East Midlands level. But then it was like, in my head, I was like, oh, maybe I could go a bit better and represent the country. <laughs> We're in the same county and we both started shooting local competitions um, at local clubs. So we were both at the same events. So obviously got to know her, um, shot with her a bit. And, you know, I know that her ambition was always that she wanted to represent Great Britain. For many young aspiring Olympians, the dream would not be possible without sponsorships and charities. SportsAid is one of those that plays a vital role for Ruby. On average, athletes spend over £7,000 each year on meeting the costs of their sports. Without this backing, thousands of athletes would face a tough decision whether to continue competing. Without them, I would probably have to consider quitting. Like it's That money is, is so significant like it's so important and it just goes towards so much like the equipments because arrows for example you go through so arrows like just in general the equipment is expensive travel uh and internationals all that i wouldn't have been able to go to any internationals if it wasn't for that funding you know we've supported basically all of the major names that you could come up with in in sort of british olympic and paralympic sport over the last sort of 40 years so the likes of Mo Farah, Jessica Ennis Hill, prior to that, you know, Steve Redgrave, Daley Thompson, Denise Lewis, just a huge range of names across a huge range of sports have been supported. Um, and I think that it's absolutely essential, um, the existence of sports aid. And without it, you know, that pathway um, to the senior ranks uh, would be a lot more difficult for that sort of next generation to be able to pursue without that financial support and, and that backing. When did this dream of representing Team GB feel like it could be a reality for Ruby? When I had my first ever NTDP session, I just thought I could see myself in this environment training. And because at the time there was other GB athletes, like the senior athletes who were shooting when we were there. And I, and I think it was... Bryony Pittman, I watched her shot and I was like, I want to have a shot just like hers. And I think from there, just kicked off and I was determined to make the academy and then it was determined to make the team. And now it's determined to make the Olympics. The Olympic hopeful is the sixth best female archer in the UK, but it hasn't all been smooth sailing for Ruby. I had an old coach who I had when I first got onto academy, I had her for four years. But at the last year, she was basically emotionally abusing me. Yeah, I had meetings, I've had everything like to, I, we weren't sure whether to like put in a formal report, but then that happened. The kind of, she told me she was disappointed in me on a trip in Romania. And then I just went, okay, stuff it then and walked off. I was like, I'm not having this anymore, I'm done. <laughs> but now the coach I've got now, Cool. She's Nikki Hunt, she's 2010 Commonwealth Champion. And she is amazing. Like her whole mental game and everything she says, it just makes sense. I definitely enjoyed my time as an athlete. Um, I worked really hard. I achieved some really cool goals. I got to the Commonwealth Games and won um, gold individually and with a team. Um, I was world number one in compound as well. And like nothing beats, I don't think, being on the line yourself and, you know, having that, that thrill of winning. Um, that was absolutely amazing times for me. Um, but you do get to a point, and in 2016, I, I decided that training six days a week was, you know, it was time to kind of 
step back from that a little bit and um, getting into the coaching really has been a fantastic experience because it's meant that all that knowledge I've built up over 25 years is now going back into my athletes. What does training look like for a Team GB Archer during lockdown? I mean, you just find ways of um, making sure you can train every day. And there's loads of things we can do in archery. Um, at the moment, it's really tr tricky with the clubs being shut, but there's always exercises you can do. There's drills you can do. You can shoot um, very close distance at home and things if it's safe inside. So, you know, there's lots of ways of doing that. And I see Ruby doing that a lot. She's often sending me videos and checking, is this technique good? And um, we've had virtual sessions through the lockdown as well. So, yeah, she's doing all the right things. She's training hard. She works hard in the gym as well. So she's an all-round athlete. She's got the support of the University of Northampton and also her, she's on TAS as well, which is the Talented Athletes um, Scholarship Scheme. So she's got all the right support there and she's training hard. So she's got the best chance. She's had her own like challenges from her. Um, I think she's had loads of issues with her shoulder and stuff. And actually, it would have been really easy for her to just go, do you know what, I just can't do this anymore. But I know that she's worked really hard with her coach and they've tried so many ways for her to carry on shooting and they've and they've come out the other end of that journey. So she's, you know, she's definitely got that drive because if she didn't, she would not be shooting anymore. Ruby isn't the only archer from Northampton with her eye on the target. Susan Corliss has been with Team GB for a number of years and has competed around the world at the highest level. And she hadn't even picked up a bow and arrow until the age of 31. When I was 15, I had a car accident and that injured my lower back. And as a result of that, I'm in constant pain. So I take pain medication to deal with the pain, but it also gives me strength and flexibility challenges. So sport that I had done since I was 15, and anything that I had tried since then, it always just been a no because it would aggravate my back. From the beginner's course, I hadn't felt that um, aggravation and I was kind of a little bit excited that I might have found a sport that I could actually do. And I just kind of went on this steep curve of just improvement. And everyone kept saying to me, Susan, at some point, you're going to plateau, like you're going to reach the point where you're not going to improve anymore and everyone was almost trying to prepare me for that you're not going to get any better type thing and it wasn't it wasn't nasty it was just general advice I guess. Susan's injury has presented constant challenges and changes throughout her life. In archery it was switching from the heavier Olympic bow to the compound. I reached a point where I was taking days to recover from shooting and one of my friends said to me look why don't you try the compound bow? And I knew that if it wasn't something that I liked or I got on with, I would have to quit archery. I have to say, it's probably only in the last 10 years that I'm actually now okay with that because where I've come through and where I've ended up is somewhere I never would have ended up otherwise. I never would have probably tried archery, never would have had the opportunity to represent Great Britain. So I, I guess sometimes things just end up in a good place. So this for gold here in Berlin. Susan and her team battled out for gold at the Women's World Cup. She came away with a silver medal. In the box seat still. Yes, Susan. Good. Good. Ruby is following in Susan's footsteps. In 2018, she competed in her first international and is a possible glimpse into the future of what's to come. I think people who get selected for the first international, usually they just go, this is a dress rehearsal for many more internationals to come. So I went there, no pressure on myself. I was just, oh, this is going to be great. Great weather with some great people, get to shoot against loads of people from different countries, and it's just going to be such an experience. Little did I know that I'd end up going into a bronze medal match on the finals field get the experience, get the initial Olympic or first Olympic nerves out the way. And then the second one is where you kind of go, right, I know what to expect. I, I'm going to go and win a medal. <laughs> but to be fair, even with Paris, it would be great to win a medal, but you never know at the time. 